So Eris is going to be taking care of the prep work for this. That's everything in step one. If you want to follow along, we're going to be using Claire Saffitz's Forever Brownie recipe. Welcome to Science Storytime with Astra, where we talk about horrible accidents which occurred during science experiments. Today, we're going the full Stanislavski, and instead of just talking about science accidents, we're going to do some science accidents, probably. I'll be baking so we, we know something bad will happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Bad Astra, where we learn about science with more costume changes than math. I'm Astra, I have a BA in physics and theater and a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, my wife is the smart one uh, and is in the home stretch of her PhD in astrophysics. Uh, she double checks a lot of our physics and astronomy, but quote, cannot be held accountable for anything squishy like chemistry or biology, so she will not be appearing today. Our main content is written by Eris. Say hi, Eris. Hi, Eris. <laughs> Eris is our sarcastic witch with occasional bouts of productivity. Uh, if you like makeup tutorials, this is completely different, but you should subscribe anyway. Wait, did I lose the dog? Cece, come here! I think she's in the bedroom, wasn't she? Uh oh, did I lock the dog in the bedroom? <laughs> this is Cece. I did not trap her in the bedroom. Say hi, Cece. Hi. Hi, Cece. Cece is a very good girl. She will not be partaking in the brownies. Tonight we're gonna do science accidents because I'll be baking, but don't worry. Uh, I'm going to be following bad Astra safety protocols. So one, I'm gonna turn the light in the kitchen on <laughs> so we can see. Really hope that didn't mess up my lighting. Sometimes you do need to see for science. Yeah, uh, and also Eris is going to be doing the actual baking. I think that this is going to be a really good idea, mainly because I can take care of all of the things that mm -hmm. Astra shouldn't, especially when it comes to baking. Yep. That's like my area of expertise, not, not Astra's. We're going to set ourselves up for the maximum amount of success. Yeah. We're not going to start the failure just yet. The eggs are going to be so bad. Why is the stove on? Because we need to blend I... with cocoa. I don't know what blooming cocoa is, and I did not read this recipe before doing this. I just kind of put science in. Okay. Well, you're about to find out. <laughs> okay, so first up, we have butter for the pan. <laughs> butter for the pan, excellent. And then we need a quarter cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder. I think it's <laughs> with a thumbprint in it or a middle finger print in it. Five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. <laughs> Excellent. Six tablespoons of unsalted butter. Oops. Got <laughs> two sticks. That'll get six. A quarter cup of neutral oil, such as vegetable or grapeseed oil. Uh, turn it around so it's vegetable oil. <laughs> It could have been olive oil. They wouldn't have known. Half a cup of granulated sugar. That's, that's, there we go. A half a cup of packed dark brown sugar. So we actually only have light brown sugar and it's, um, it's solid like a rock. So, uh, what about optimal success? Yeah. I do not understand. We can be philosophy tube too. I can use a hammer. This is not, this is not actually working. We need less than a cup of this. Maybe we can make a little ice sculpture. Should we have cleaned these? They're not clean. Nova is at the store right now getting us 
uh, replacement brown sugar, so I'm just gonna throw this away. They're all suggesting Betty Crocker brownie mix. No. <laughs> That is an affront to my talents as a baker. One large egg. These are actually medium eggs, but we're gonna try. You need two egg yolks, so we're gonna have to separate eggs during this. Okay, we have a bunch of eggs. It'll work out. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. So actually, Nova's getting that. Nova, we found out like five minutes before the stream that my brown sugar and my vanilla extract were wrong. And uh, should I have checked this? Earlier today, yes. Three quarters cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of malted milk powder. Yeah, two tablespoons of that. One teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt. We spilled something. We spilled powder. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, six ounces of milk chocolate coarsely chopped, which Nova is also getting from Whole Foods because there was a miscommunication on which uh, ingredients Eris was bringing. What could go wrong? <laughs> Given that you were using the hammer and a chisel very near my face, we should have been using safety glasses. I mean, as your hands, I didn't need safety glasses because my eyes were not in the range of danger. <laughs> I got brown sugar. Dark brown sugar. Dark brown sugar. Brown specifically. I got two things of it because I wasn't sure how much you needed. Swimmy sweet chocolate baking bars. This is just that Greek that's for yogurt. Me. That's for me. <laughs> Uh, we also have lemonade. Okay, but we most- Uh, the jerky's for me. Granola. I assume the granola's not going in the brownies. Correct. Not with that end. Hey, boo-boo. Right. It's okay. That's just a paper bag. It's inanimate. Mm -hmm. Um, my dog is scared of bags. Like, paper bags, plastic bags. They are her nemesis. And it's okay, we love it. Yeah, mommy loves you. Okay, but mommy's gotta bake. Is the oven preheating? Yep. It's preheated, the pan is prepared, and we have the water going on to bloom the cocoa. So in a large heat-proof bowl, whisk the cocoa powder and a quarter cup of boiling Damn, water. Not. Okay, so we need a quarter cup of boiling... Damn it! <laughs> okay. Okay, so we whisk that with a quarter cup of boiling water. So let's get ourselves... Oh, there's heat. Let's turn the stove off before we do this. Why didn't you just boil it in the kettle? Because this was being used for the, uh, the double boiler. Okay. Oh, this is the fancy rice. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're already <laughs> cheating. Okay, it's boiling water, so go very carefully. Is it half a cup? Quarter cup, quarter cup, only a quarter cup. That's it, that's, that's a quarter cup. Okay, put it back on the stove, put it back on the stove. And do we have a whisk? It's, it's back here. Ah. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing great. You whisk it until smooth, and according to Claire Saffitz, this will bring out the flavor of the cocoa. Some recipes actually use extra cocoa butter uh, because the natural fat from the cocoa bean uh, will enhance the mouthfeel. Uh, and here at Bad Astra, we are all about a good mouthfeel. Let's talk about salt dissolving, uh, because we're going to talk about science, and there's at no point do we dissolve salt, but I'm going to talk about salt dissolving anyway. So water is a universal solvent. We're currently using it to dissolve cocoa powder. Uh, but a lot of stuff dissolves in water, like more stuff dissolves in water than anything else. That's one of the reasons that scientists believe life uh, on extraterrestrial planets uh, will require water, liquid water to exist. So anyway, when salt dissolves, the salt molecules, sodium chloride, are ionized or torn apart by the water. In, so instead of uh, your NaCl, uh, molecules, you get salt reduced to sodium, Na plus, and chlorine, Cl minus, ions. Because uh, little atoms without their molecules and, uh, that are plus and minus are ions. Sorry, I'm really distracted by my hands. Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> amazing. But if the water evaporates, the ionization process will reverse and the sodium and the chloride atoms will rejoin with each other. There's no metaphor I can use here without getting shamed by Nova and Eris for my dirty mind. That's how ionization works. It's just molecules coming apart 
in water and then rejoining when the water goes away. According to Robert, this is the weirdest live stream we've done. And really that tells me we need to up our game. I literally think that right now what I'm doing is easier than if I tried to bake this myself. God, my squats are gonna be on point after this. Step three is melt the chocolate, butter, and oil. Add the semi-sweet chocolate. Uh, this, that's dark brown sugar. Where's, where's the, one of these is semi-sweet chocolate. Is that yeah. semi-sweet chocolate? Okay, add that. Uh, how much did we need? We should have multiple copies of the recipe out, I'm realizing. You're doing great. I know. Let's talk about why chocolate melts. Uh, chocolate contains cocoa butter, uh, which is the fat extract from the cocoa bean. Cocoa butter has a polymorphic, uh, which means many shaped properties. Uh, specifically, there are six different crystal forms that all become fluid when exposed to heat. So there are just six different crystal structures uh, within the chocolate. Just gonna hold you there. Once the chocolate cools back down, uh, all of those crystals will reform and chocolate will re-solidify. So basically, uh, that's why you can have chocolate in weird shapes. <laughs> Don't do that. You're cheating. <laughs> you missed. You literally just had to drop it in and you missed. <laughs> Butter, we needed uh, six tables, six ounces, right? Yeah, it's one and a half sticks, right? Put it on the table, please. Please put it on the table. I'm just making a mark so I know where to cut. While we cut the butter, uh, we'll check in with the chat. So Queen Marcia is calling us out for cheating. Uh, <laughs> hey, this is really hard. <laughs> they're all just correcting my baking terminology <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, I'm so, so bad at baking. Baking, uh, yeah, just, uh, it, it very much helps me. That's on the knife, that's gonna go so poorly. I have science to discuss later, I promise, but right now I'm just a little worried. Yeah, it's a quarter cup, that's a quarter cup. Okay, it was a quarter cup, right? Mm-hmm. Excellent. The cap is right here. Got it. Can you put the cap back on the oil? Cause that's gonna go so, so poorly. Chocolate, butter, and oil. So now we need to set it uh, over to a medium saucepan filled with about an inch of simmering, not boiling water. Uh, make sure the bottom of the bowl isn't touching the water. Okay. Oh yeah, that's simmering. I did not know I was going to be throwing a bunch of paper around, but I did. Um, you shouldn't have trusted me. Really, really should not have trusted you. Oh my God, we have to separate eggs. Chocolate is melting. Okay. So the melting will take a bit. So. I'm just gonna really, really poorly separate the eggs. You're just, you're all watching me just focusing extremely hard on a task that like, is relatively easy. High schoolers taking foods class don't struggle with as much. Okay, we got a yolk. Cool. I can do a full egg. That's the one with the Yep. Uh, this is the one you should break it on because that's the, okay. You're going to need to go harder. Okay. So we are, I am currently, you, you oh, I'm using my hand, that, that would have, I just, I didn't want to get goop all over my hand. Can I get the shells? I need to lean over and get the shells and put them in the, damn it. Okay, hold on. God. You, I, you could have just bent over. I can't place. aim. You literally threw an eggshell at a at the ground and missed. <laughs> uh, do we need the egg whites for anything? Um, no. Make yourself a snack if you want. There's still um, there's still butter, so I think we should be okay to have it not burn because we are putting it on relatively gentle heat. Um, do you have another whisk? Another. I literally only have one whisk. Amateur hour. This might be the first time I'm using that whisk. So what happens when you whisk the eggs? Uh, the beating of the eggs is usually done to denature the proteins that lay within the egg. Uh, since proteins are long chains of amino acids, whenever a protein is denatured, those bonds are broken 
and the amino acid bonds unravel. Uh, proteins instead are elongated and atoms that were previously bonded between them become available to bond with other molecules. So eggs in a cake mixture may fulfill one or more of three basic functions. Beaten egg white is used uh, like baking powder to give the dough a light, fluffy consistency, like egg whites. I need to, <laughs> what a mess. It's fine, I flipped it, we're good. This light, fluffy consistency is possible with the, because egg whites, albumin, contains lectithin, which is a protein that coats the air bubbles created during beating, which stops the cake from sinking during baking. Electithin also acts as a binder, uh, which holds the cake together. But when egg is used as a glaze, so the third use is as a glaze, it also acts as a source of protein for the sugars, the sugar's malleard reaction. Uh, that's the sugar browning, you know, when you have that like crispy brown crust with the sugar, that the egg helps with that. That's what like an egg wash glaze would do. Ooh, show it off, it looks so pretty. It is shiny and it's chocolate. And therefore, this is everything that is good in the world. Robert Williams asked, is this how the robot arms work in a clean room? And yes, yes, this is exact. This is also how glove boxes work. You just, you have to have someone as the human shield. Well, yeah. Uh, that was, that's what they make the undergrads do in clean rooms. Yep. That's, that's exactly how that works. Straight up facts with errors and astro. Monika says that when a trans person comes out of their egg, we call it denaturing. I love everything about that. Joe asks what the eggs did to us. And you know what? They know what crimes. they did. Crimes. So many crimes. <laughs> not, not legal crimes. But like illegal crimes, you know, the opposite <laughs> of legal crimes. I was gonna say moral crimes. <laughs> While we have some time, let's talk about sugar melting. Like why? Why do we melt sugar? When sugar or sucrose melts, it becomes a clear liquid and breaks down, forming glucose and fructose. Uh, oh boy. Uh, which has the formula C6H12O6. How, how long is this gonna take to pack? I'm trying my best. I, I believe in you. Don't pressure your hands. How much do we need? Half a cup. Okay, we're almost there, we're close. Come on arms, you can do it. Are you looking through the, yes. the armhole? I don't wanna have such bad aim. Nova has set herself on fire while cooking twice. First time was junior year of college and Nova was teaching me her fajita chicken recipe and was helping me make it. And it's, it's family recipe, so I was gonna make it with her. Oh boy. Oh no. We're both cooking at the stove and Nova notices that her sleeve is warm. Her sleeve is warm because she has stuck her sleeve into my burner and has lit herself on fire. She did kind of turn and go, oh, I'm on fire. And at that point, I should have sprung into like protective helper mode. Uh, instead, I collapsed laughing. She put out the fire and uh, destroyed her shirt, but uh, was fine. Like she, she did not hurt herself. There were no burns on Nova, uh, but she didn't get to wear that shirt anymore because the sleeve was just gone. It was a purple flannel shirt too. Like it was a really, I liked that shirt and we had to throw it away. But oh, it so a, you're saying it uh, became half off? Okay, if you ever discover part of you to be on fire, it's important to remember these safety steps directly from patron Robert Williams. Amazing. Number one, panic. Yep. Number two, flail about wildly. Correct. Uh, number three, run around until it is out. Yep. Uh, especially touching as much flammable objects because then the fire uh, will choose those objects and leave you alone. You want to give this very conscious flame a better alternative. The other time, we had a friend over and I was making stir fry. And Nova decided to clean the stove while I was still making stir fry and while the stove was on. 
So she's like wiping it down with a Windex covered paper towel and I and my friend who's over say, hey Nova, stop that, you're gonna set yourself on fire again because it's been years, but we still never let her live that first time down. And Nova said, no, I can do it, I can do it. And then she sets the paper towel on fire because of course she does. She sticks it into an open flame. Who tries to clean a stove while the stove is on? Who does that? My wife. She then takes out the paper towel that's on fire. She's right by the sink. She's standing between the stove and the sink. So she could just drop it in the sink. No, she drops it on our rug. It is a nice rug. It is a nice rug we got from Nova's mom. I love this rug. It was a kitchen rug. I have been very careful not to spill anything on this rug. She drops a flaming paper towel on this rug. Luckily, uh, my friend and I are both there. We pick up the paper towel, put it in the sink, and then turn the sink on. Uh, because fun thing about water, it actually puts out fire. There was a science fun what? fact in this story. Hold on. Yeah. I, I didn't know that water put out fire. Yeah. The reason water puts out fire is actually very interesting. It smothers the flame. Fl fire needs oxygen uh, to breathe, and it absorbs oxygen as chemical reaction. Uh, so it's nothing specific about water. It's just that it's suffocating the flame. You can pull that toward you, by the way. Hmm? You can pull that toward you so you don't have to reach as far. I know. Okay. This is all about the angle of my back right now. Ah, I see. Okay. You're also kind of like resting on me. Okay. That, that's what that is. Okay. He, uh, you know, it's a really good thing we're not a real company and don't have an HR. <laughs> Where on the doll did Eris fall asleep on you? <laughs> I didn't fall asleep. Yeah. Because what water is doing to fire is actually just smothering the flame, uh, that's actually why lithium ion batteries, when they explode and catch fire, that's why uh, smothering them in water doesn't work. It's because the lithium ion uh, battery has its own oxidizer and its own oxygen source. So uh, if you have a battery fire and you drop the batteries that are on fire into a vat of water, you will now have a wet battery fire, uh, which is one of the reasons uh, battery fires are so bad. They're just really hard to uh, put out because smothering the flame just does not work. Uh, you can blow on it, you'll have a stronger fire. Getting rid of the oxygen will not work. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's your fun fact. Ah! Okay, the vanilla was capped. It was capped. I am just rubbing this around. Yep. I am actively making this mess worse. So now we are going to add the dry ingredients. Add the flour, the um, malted milk powder, salt, chocolate malt, uh, flour. We've got various measuring cups. This is gonna go so well. And whisk it slowly until everything's combined. Then whisk more vigorously until the batter is very thick, a full, 45 seconds. The recipe calls for a full uh, teaspoon of salt, but because you're using um, Morton salt specifically, it has to get halved because diamond uh, crystal kosher salt doesn't have as many uh, salt molecules per grain as this one does because Morton packs their salt in a different way. Add the flour, or what are you adding first? Not the flour? We're gonna go flour first. Okay, flour first. Three quarters of a cup, yes. Let's talk about gluten formation, since we're talking about flour. So uh, most baking is based on the use of flour, uh, the powder form of grains, nuts, and beans. Wheat flour, which is what we're using today, uh, and the most commonly used type of flour in baking, is composed largely of starch and protein, with very high levels of a class of protein known collectively as gluten. So gluten is a bunch of types of protein. When water is added to wheat flour, the gluten forms a heavy, pliable mass. So that's why when we mix this up, it's gonna become dough-like and not still liquidy. Uh, this expands greatly under hot temperatures and sets with the desired airy texture. So yeah, the flour is what makes it like thicker, which is why when your dough is too runny, you, you add flour. You just stuck that into the, that was, 
that was wet. I rinsed that and put it in the dishwasher and you just, you just stuck it in there. You might need new salt. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just destroying your life. <laughs> uh, you gotta mix for a full 45 seconds. You know, this is actually quite nice and I feel like this would be even nicer if the AC was working <laughs> and we weren't both just sweating. The, honestly, it's above 70 degrees. I'm actually feeling all of my limbs. Next, we're gonna fold in the chocolate. Um, should I break up the chocolate for us? I was out at a bar for my friend's birthday, right? And we were all drinking and having a good time and my leg kept feeling wet. And I was like, oh, this someone must have just like spilled their drink on me or something or like somebody else like spit a little too much. So I kept like rubbing it on my legs uh, because I was wearing shorts. Mm -hmm. um, and there was at one point where I was just like, wow, my leg keeps getting wet. What's going on? And I look down and I see my own blood on my hands <laughs> and I see a tiny little spot. It was almost like one of my pores just decided to bloodlet. <laughs> it was just a little so you were just, your body was just leaking blood? It was just leaking uh, from one tiny little spot like this. Did. Does that happen? Never before. Uh, I didn't know that was a thing that could happen to humans. Are we sure two bars before I cut it up? Is it okay if I get it wrong? Yeah, because that's more chocolate in the brownies. I know that baking is chemistry and I'm really worried about getting this wrong because, you know, Nova's gonna eat these and she's gonna judge me because she already thinks I'm a terrible baker because, you know, she has eyes. It's okay, you know, your arms really uh, did a lot of the important work. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I told her that I was gonna have some help from my arms and she was like, oh no, does that mean what I think it means? And I was like, absolutely. And she's like, oh God. <laughs> and then she said, as long as you clean up after. How finely do I need to chop this? Um, how small do you want the pieces in the actual brownies? Uh, the solid pieces. Oh God, you've asked me to make a decision and this is why scripts take forever. It's because I never make decisions. Folding it in, that means like mixing it slowly rather than whisking it in, right? Yeah, because the whisking incorporates the air into the batter. So folding it in gently means that we don't want to knock out any of that air that we whisked in. Um, though there's not like tons of air. Like if this was a meringue, I'd be more concerned because it's more delicate with mm -hmm. the um, egg proteins. We add the milk chocolate to the batter and fold in with a flexible spatula, that's what we've got, to distribute. Then we're gonna scrape the batter into the prepared pan. That wasn't as bad as it could've been. Are we, how are we doing? Okay, <laughs> maybe. I can't <laughs> see much of what's going on in front of me, so I'm going based on feel. Oh, she says you were stabbed by a poison umbrella. That's, that's what happened. Yep. Doesn't surprise me. I hang out with a bunch of criminals. How are you doing? I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> I write in the script, Astrid Eris put brownies in oven without injuries. Oh my God. Oh no. Bold of you to assume there will be no injuries. Mm. When I bake, there's mm. always at least one. I'm gonna scrape the batter into the prepared pan. Uh, we have to spread in an even what? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> we spread it an even layer all the way to the corners. Um, and now we have to put it in the oven about 25 to 30 minutes. All we have to do is put the brownies in the oven. Okay, I'm gonna squat. <laughs> okay, okay. Ooh, don't, don't set in the crotch. I'm gonna look in. Okay, okay. And back up. Success! <laughs> no injuries! Nice one, arms. Thank you. Let's just consciously uncouple there. Now that the brownies are in the oven, let's talk about different leavening agents in baking and what they do. Why do, in cake or bread, we use baking soda, baking powder, or yeast? Well, leavening agents, such as baking soda, baking powder, and yeast, give baked dough uh, its lightness. You know what, I'm just gonna put all, everything that was out here is just gonna go in the dishwasher. Uh, Eris, yes. if I don't have baking soda, can I just use baking powder? No. Why not? I don't actually know, I just know they're very different. Baking soda's chemical formula is 2-NaHCO3. Uh, baking powder, which is baking soda with an additional acidic salt, is NaHCO3, so it, it just doesn't have the two. There's one with a two, one without a two. Uh, but the key thing is that 
uh, baking powder has an additional acidic salt. So baking soda produces carbon dioxide as well as water, H2O, and sodium, Na+, according to the following equation. We're just gonna put that up there in front of Eris's face. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna hurt you with numbers. Um, ah. Baking soda uh, reacts with acids in the dough to make carbon dioxide, which helps the dough to rise. Baking powder, which is baking soda with an additional acidic salt, releases carbon dioxide twice during the baking process, once when it hits water, and again, when it reaches a certain temperature in the oven. Heat helps baking powder produce tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide, and those tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide are what make a cake light and fluffy. So, you know, just like soda, uh, which is why, you know, people make soda bread, because it's kind of the same basic concept. And it's yummy. Yeast is a single-celled fungus that feeds on starch and sugars. Yeah, when it farts. Yeah. And that's what makes it rise. Yeah. When added to the dough, the, e the yeast eats the dough and releases carbon dioxide bubbles, giving the dough a light, delicate texture. So yeah, rising bread is powered by yeast farts. Yes, beaten eggs do a bit of leavening too. That's why my challah did not rise. Because you didn't add... I didn't add two eggs. I was short two eggs because I, I thought I knew what, what I was doing and lo and behold, I did not. So you had just unrisen challah. But you know what? It was good. Though I, I am not, I'm no longer a hollow back girl. Okay, let's talk about browning reactions. So sugar does much more than just sweetening uh, a cake or bread or brownies. Uh, when the baking temperature reaches 300 degrees Fahrenheit, sugar undergoes what is called a Maillard reaction. I think I mentioned that earlier. Maillard reactions are chemical reactions between amino acids, proteins, and reducing sugars. Uh, the result is browning, which forms the crust of many baked goods. So if you see that like yummy brown sugary crust of like an apple pie in the store, that's a Maillard reaction. A Maillard reaction is not the same as caramelization, but they both work together to create that like appetizing golden brown surfaces and an array of different flavors. Uh, sugar also provides a direct food source for the yeast, which enhances the yeast's activity, so. Typically, uh, when it comes to yeast, if you have a recipe that says, hey, add the salt and the sugar, it should definitely be in the context of it like already being added to the flour as well because uh, salt will kill yeast. So you want to make sure that like either it's properly distributed or you're not putting salt into it right away. Mix it up first. Fun fact. Now, this egg white is going to be a super tasty snack. But first, I have to rip it up into little tiny bits. I have cleaned off all of the chocolate from the counter. Uh, and this egg white is fully cooled and broken up. Oh, do you have a toothpick or an ice pick? A toothpick or an ice pick? That's to test to make sure that the brownies are cooked all the way through. No, but I have knives. A knife will work. In order to tell if a bake is um, fully done, what you want to do is you want to stick a toothpick in it. Um, and if you want super chewy brownies, mm. you underbake them a little bit. So like mm. there's still a little bit of batter that comes out. Um, otherwise, fully cooked brownies are going to have a clean toothpick when they come out because there's no liquid for them to like attach themselves to. I do like a slightly melty brownie, kind of like in the thumbnail for this. Cece, eat your eggs. Yeah, there you go. She's shaking. She goes on the counter when we're giving her a bath. Oh, so she's like, it's bath time. Oh, it's not bath time. Cece, eat your eggs. I actually uh, have a whole video that I let the patrons see, which was Nova and me giving Cece a bath and oh i i remember that one. did i send you that you sent it to me the yeah. just absolute chaotic mess hey, Cece. you're the only dog i like on this world I oh no right. sasha rich came in and apparently we've been busted by osha uh we've been violating food safety restrictions by having a dog on the counter eating off our plates it's just us cooking for us and i have given myself food poisoning like once every six months for the past 10 years so, <laughs> yes, 
Yes, we're violating OSHA. <laughs> it's real bad. Twice a year. I don't intend to. I think she liked it. See? See, look, OSHA. Take that. I didn't realize that some of our uh, viewers were narcs. Bad Astro is funded in part by nefarious organizations like you. <laughs> yes! Uh, if you want to fu be a nefarious organization funding this nonsense, uh, we would love it if you checked out our Patreon. You, you can get all kinds of bonus content. Uh, for our edited videos, we put all the bloopers up on Patreon. Uh, for some of our levels, we have a blog. Uh, just It's a video podcast. It's We record our tech meetings uh, over Zoom. Work in progress. Uh, script teasers, announcements of editing process, and you get to vote, uh, like our patrons voted on today's thumbnail. Thank uh, you for using the one with the glass of alcohol in my hands <laughs> and the very scared look, because I think that's accurate. Oh, we gotta test the brownies. Stop, shut up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm about to fight Dr. Michael Brown with a fork. <laughs> okay, it's my weapon of choice. Okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Ow. Okay, we've opened the oven. All right. Uh, pull one of the shelves out, or pull that out, I guess. Oh, that's no, not no, set. it's not close to set. Okay. Shut up. Okay. Okay, so the brownies are definitely not ready. It is really good to have patrons in the chat. Uh, Joe, Robert, and Marcia. Thank you all so 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 much for supporting this absolute nonsense. We want to thank you very much for patronizing Bad Astro. Why would anyone fund this? That's a terrible idea. And um, it is. Yeah, you are yeah. correct. But we love terrible ideas here. If you like terrible ideas too, join our Patreon. Why? <laughs> We're gonna fight the oven uh, before we bite Dr. Mike Brown. We're gonna celebrate like not being Not turned. injuring ourselves. Yeah, not being injured yet. We still have to do the scariest part, which is taking the brownies out of the oven. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to turn that off. <laughs> do my arms want to open the champagne? No, no. I don't even know how to open champagne. Well, okay, good. Wait. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, tilt the champ. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay, that was that was better. Okay. Fill this. Fill the rest of this up. Okay. Yeah, that's that's slightly better. Are these at all even? Kinda. That one yeah, that one leaves more. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more. Close enough. <laughs> toast. Oh, here. I'm double fist. A toast <laughs> to whatever this baking live stream was. <gasps> I haven't. No, I didn't get it. <laughs> How is it? That is actually very good champagne. Here. I will let you. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. You were you're a lot taller. I, I don't I didn't have to realize swap how, for this. I didn't realize how much taller I am than yeah. you. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just some more? Sure. How was that? That was much more successful than mine. Thank you to everyone who is showing up to the stream, helping us get those watch hours. You could definitely help us by watching our other videos, uh, especially uh, the things on the main content playlist. Those are the ones that Eris wrote. They are the ones we are definitely the most proud of. Uh, tell your friends all about Bad Astra. We love new subscribers, new people in the chat. Okay, <laughs> let's go. We can do this. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, it's open. Just push it down, push it down with the oven. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna, s oh my God, this is so bad. This is... Okay, it's it's set, which is good. Uh, stab it, maybe? We're gonna close that first. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Nope. Yeah, that needs more. Is it? It's hot, be careful. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. 
Not sure if it's quite good. Okay. Okay. Let's good. put it back in the oven. <laughs> oh my god. We can do this. I just I'm squatting. Yeah. Oh, I really don't I don't want to burn off my pants. I don't want you to either. Shut up, oven. It's like you opened me. Oh god. Oh okay, I didn't fall. We're good. We're good. Okay. Thank Please you. Don't fall. I'm just holding. The lengths I will go to to be hugged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sasha is our emergency contact, apparently. Uh, I'm so glad there's a video of this. I don't want to have to worry about explaining to the emergency room nurses what happened. They just get the full boy back and they're like, yeah, that, of yeah, course you would. Yeah. But why did you think this was a good you were drinking too? <laughs> we're just gonna have call 911 and just have them on speaker for when things go wrong. Okay, Cece, no sorry. champagne for you. You're too young. And I just I really like Jennifer, so really? <laughs> I mean accurate, but I just feel like you roasted me. You have a type. <laughs> yeah, it is evil, powerful women. That's why we're business partners. Because I'm an evil, powerful woman. And why I married Nova. Okay. <gasps> Let's go. It's not. Okay. How are we doing? How are we doing? Hot. Okay. Um, can you close that? Or, uh, yeah, I'll use my foot. All right. This is safety. It's hot. It is hot. It tastes really good, though. <laughs> Okay, let's put it back in the oven. Oh my god. What? How long are you? Was it 350 that it said? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. Oh god. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I just raised the oven and it hurt. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's okay, okay. I'm doing squats. Don't burn the crotch. Don't burn the crotch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, I'm glad we're so close. And I guess, you know... There's I'm... no hole in my pants, we're good. <laughs> More champagne! Oh no! On the one hand, as a feminist, I see the idea of a woman, like, who is, like, confident and comfortable in her own sexuality always having to be the villain. I see that as a bad thing. Like we basically say uh, a woman with a healthy sexuality must be evil. Like that's how all fairy tales are coded. That's how our media is coded. Like the pretty like confident woman is always the villain and the pretty insecure woman is always like, shut up. So as a feminist that upsets me, like just from a what are we teaching our children, but as a woman who likes women, just... <laughs> like, on the one hand, this is damaging to our culture. On the other hand, step on me, pretty evil lady, you know? So, um, we were not baking it at the correct temperature. We had it too hot for the glass pan. It was too so, hot? Yeah, so I reduced it to, um, uh, 325. So Wait, so we had it too hot and it's still not baking in time? Yeah. Well, also, um, at least with ovens. What did we mess up? Nothing. Oh. This is just, this is what happens. Like, a lot of Claire's bakes, she gives the recommended time, and she, like, is pretty specific about it. Um, but she always says, you know, go by the looks. Don't go by, like, the amount of time. So that's why I'm gauging it this way, because the times aren't necessarily accurate for every single oven, because your oven can have cool spots or warm spots based on how the, um, the gas is being distributed and all the heat. Um, so if you want to like optimize your bakes, what you have to do is you have to turn your oven on and basically have a thermometer in different sections. So then you can figure no, out which parts No, 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 that's way too complicated. Yeah, that's why I don't do it. So I just like- What if I yeah. threaten the oven? Um, it might burn them. That's why I try to be polite. It would be helpful oven if you didn't uh, Screw us. <laughs> it almost went through my nose. The brownies that I am comparing this to were kind of slapdash but very chocolatey. So what notes should
should I be getting out of these brands that are different, given that it's not a complex <gasps> profile, it is- No, complex. no, no, no. Oh God. How was I able to successfully avoid doing that when I just was pouring as your hands? Because you were sober. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in terms of these brownies, if the oven would like to shut up. Should we repeat the question so that the yeah. subscriber or the so viewers can the hear it? the question is, what notes are you going to expect in these brownies? And at least for Claire's Malted Forever brownies, uh, you will get more of a malt flavor uh, in the chocolate. So like, almost like a eating a very like fudgy malty um, sort of like situation. That's probably it. And then um, if you used cocoa powder in the brownies and not melted chocolate, you're also gonna get a more diluted flavor of the chocolate itself. So because it combines the cocoa powder as well as the melted chocolate, it's going to add more body and richness to the brownies themselves. Assume the position. Assume the position! God, I feel like Julia Child. Okay. I assure you, Julia Child did not do it like this. What did tempering the chocolate accomplish? Ooh, it there was, was no tempering. Okay, okay. Uh, what uh, was the double boiler about? Squat. That was, um, okay. Melting the chocolate. Okay. All right. Yep. And why did microwave? Microwave. Hey, hey, hey. It looks solid. I think we can be done. Yeah, I think this is enough to... Hot, hot. I always forget... It's right out of the I oven. always forget that it's going to be hot. Okay. Uh, but yeah, these look like they're going to set really fudgy and chewy. Mm. Who let us drink and do this? <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, it looks very pretty. That hole in the center is from multiple stab wounds. You got to make sure that your brownies are fully dead before they come out of the oven. Oh, um, yeah. Otherwise, they're going to try to run. They ran into our knife ten times. <laughs> they had it coming. They had it coming. They only had themselves to blame. <laughs> Step eight of the recipe. Cool, chill, and cut. Allow the brownies to cool in the pan until they are no longer hot about one hour. No, no, no. Honestly, that's the one piece of this recipe that I'm like, Claire, what are you doing? Everyone uh, likes fresh Warm then brownies. refrigerate until the bottom of the pan feels cold about an hour. She wants us to wait two hours and put these things in the refrigerator. No, no, Claire, no. Apparently it gives it a chillier texture. No, I want warm brownies and more importantly, I want them now. We streamed this during dinner. I haven't had dinner. I'm getting a little hangry. Uh, and also- And my champagne is in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, let's... I think we're going to have the brownies now. An awkward individual. A toast to all of you. Thank you for coming. Uh, please check out our Patreon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Smash that like button and subscribe and all the good stuff. I am so bad at engagement. That's fine. Uh, most importantly, just throw on one of the playlists muted in the background of what you're doing so we can get those sweet, sweet watch hours. Sweet, sweet watch hours. <laughs> almost monetized. We're almost there. Thank you so much, chat. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Hello, this is Astra, Eris, and Nova, and we are taste testing the brownies like half an hour later. Um, Let's see how they go. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Mm. These are really good. These are a lot better than the mixed brownies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cece, you, you cannot have no brownies. Absolutely not, mm. girly. All right, Nova, what do you think? They're just more intense. I'm not sure that I would have identified the malt had I not known it was in it, but there is just a more intense chocolatiness than the ones that we had last time. That's the melted chocolate for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, Eris, what do you think? I've made these before. They taste like I did before. And they're good. Yeah. They're much more successful than my hala, for sure. <laughs> um, I really like them. I think mm, they are a heck of a lot better than the ones I made at uh, 10 30 at night with a mix. And honestly, uh, like, considering that we did most of this with me being your hands. Yeah. This is genuinely impressive that these were as successful as they are. Okay, Cece, what do you think of not being able to eat the brownies? What do you think? What are your thoughts? 
She looks sad. She looks disappointed. I love you though. You got an you got an you got egg whites though. You got egg white treat. Yeah, you had something that will kill you. That's what's important, Cece. And you're licking my finger. <laughs> Astra out. Bye. Astra, Astra, to the stars, to the stars.